Happy Saturday! Join me in this artsy, crafty, fun, and yummy weekend as we learn how to create different creative and meaningful projects with our hands. I am Teacher Julie, and this is Teacher Viva Weekend Special where we will engage in experiments, explore do-it-yourself activities, and many more! Since it is still not safe to go out and meet face-to-face, -face, we need to be creative in reaching out to people and sending messages virtually. We teachers need to be creative in delivering lessons to our students remotely. One great way is through videos. Don't know how to edit one? Don't worry! In today's episode, I will give you tips on how to edit videos. Are you ready? Let's go! Before we dive into the editing proper, let me first share with you some video editing apps you can try. First is Quick. It is a free app that lets you add transitions and effects onto a maximum of 200 photos and video clips from your photo library or GoPro Plus. Aside from that, it allows you to trim, zoom, and rotate photos and videos and also choose from 26 different themes and a range of fonts, filters, and graphics. How great is that? Second is the iMovie app. If you're an Apple user, this app is a lifesaver. This app provides you with everything you need for a video editing app. Simply drop your clip, trim them, and add built-in music, effects, and animated text, and your video is good to go. Third on our list is We Video. If you want everything to be personalized, this app is perfect for you. We Video gives you the chance to play with all the elements like text, transitions, and motion effects. It also comes with a basic green screen special effects. Plus, with its cloud storage, it is easier for you to start on one device and pick up where you left on another. Fourth is KineMaster. This editing app is very easy to use even for non-professionals. Complete with features that lets you cut order, transition between, add presets, effects, and graphics, this app lets you create beautiful videos straight from your phone. Next on our list, I think you've heard about this, is PowerDirector. This one is made for Android and Windows users. Packed with features that lets you access video effects, add transitions, effects, and titles, and crop footages, this app sure is very convenient to use. And of course, last but not the least, is Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, don't be intimidated by this editing software. This may be designed for professional editing, but I'm sure you can use it easily too. Ready to get started? The first key to success is understanding the workspace of your app. You must know how to navigate the tools and options in your app. This includes importing your video and creating your initial sequence. In Premiere Pro, the first thing you would see is the prompt for you to start your new project or continue with the previous one. With a new project, you will see in the editing view that your workspace is divided into four areas. The project, timeline, program, and source area. The project area is where you see your media files in your device. Then, the timeline and program area which has a strong working relationship. The timeline area shows you a laid out collection of frames and audio tracks that will be present in your video output. The program area shows you the pictures and videos based on where you drag your arrow on the timeline area. Last but not the least is the source area which lets you easily trim your media before adding them in your timeline. Now that would be quite confusing having four panels at once, right? So to maximize one area, you can click on the tilde key on your keyboard to zoom out the area that is highlighted on your screen.
Now, let's do some of the basics in doing some general trimmings and transitions on our movie clips. If you remember, media files are found on the project area. Just select the file you need by double-clicking on it for it to appear on the source area. In the source area, you can use the play and stop button, but as a tip, it's a lot easier to just grab the playhead and scrub it forward and backward. You may also hit the spacebar on your keyboard to play and pause the clip. Once you find the specific frames that you want to add in your final video, click mark in and out. You can also use your keyboard in doing this. Simply hit I for mark in and O for mark out. Next is to drag and drop it to the timeline area. You'll notice that the app already set up the correct timeline and frame to match the one in the source area. Now to add more clips, just repeat the previous step. Once you have trimmed your video clip, you'll notice that there's a gap between the two videos. You can just drag it and snap it to the next video or better, you can just click the gap and press delete on your keyboard to connect the two clips. That is called a ripple delete. You can also rearrange the order of your clips in your project. You can do this by selecting the video clip with your cursor and press the command key on Mac or control key on Windows to drag the clip on your desired sequence. Make sure to turn on your snap to avoid unnecessary gaps between your videos. To make it interesting, you can also add transition effects on your video clips from the project area. Simply go to Effects then Video Transitions. Just select the effect you like and drag it in between the two clips. To make the effects longer or shorter, you can click on it on your timeline and drag the end of your effect. Next stop is to add text and graphics. It is quite easy to add text on clips in Premiere Pro. You just simply click File, then New, and Legacy Title. It will open a pop-up window where you will see some familiar tools on the left for adding and editing text, shapes, and alignments. On to the right are tools for adjustments of these elements. There are a lot of textiles below the shown clip that you can choose from. Once you're good with your textile, simply close the pop-up window. Don't worry, titles are automatically saved. Now, you can see it in the project area and you can simply drag and drop it on the timeline.
Again, you can drag it to make it appear on your video longer or shorter. You can also add transition effects to your text. For the graphics, you just need to click File, then Import, and locate the PNG or JPEG file you want to import. Simply drag the file from its location to your timeline. You will notice that you will have handles on the side of your image that would allow you to make it bigger or smaller. You can also drag it around where you desire to place it. Last but not least is of course the audio. You surely don't want to miss adding fun music to make your video cooler and more interesting. To do that, you just need to drag and drop your chosen audio on your timeline. You can also trim it in a way you trim your video clips. You place your cursor on the edge of your audio. Once read, just drag it to your preferred beginning or end of the audio. You can also add effects from the project area and place it on the audio in the timeline area. Now, what do we do once we're happy with our video? It's time to export! To do that, simply follow these steps. First, mark the parts you want to render. Hover your playhead to mark in and out. Press I on your keyboard for mark in and O for mark out. Second, go to File, then Export and Media. For beginners, it is better to start with the format H.264 and for the preset, use YouTube or Vimeo. Third is to decide on your output name. Fourth, choose a folder destination where you want to place your exported video. Lastly, click export to start encoding process. Wow! Your video is now ready for sharing. The materials that we will be needing are 3 tin cans of the same size, red paint, ice pick, and candles. Ready? Let's go! Paint the cans using red paint. Lastly, put some candles inside. Wow! Now you can already light up your Christmas dinners with these candle holders that will surely make us feel the Christmas joy. That's a lot of options and tools, right? But I know that practice will help you get used to this and bring the inner editing master in you. 
And there you have it. You now have edited your own video. Now that's just the basic. The rest is up to you. There are a multitude of tools and options that you can still explore and utilize. Good luck on your video editing exploration. That's it for today. I hope you have learned a lot about editing videos. Again, I am Teacher Julie and see you again next week for more fun DIY videos here in Teacher Vival Weekend Special. Bye!